And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, A Rose for Pamela. The concert was progressing successfully, brilliantly, as Denise Barrett listened closely. The young artist had perfect command of the keyboard at her fingertips, and the quiet, inspired audience watching. This was because, like her famous father, the late Thomas Barrett, she loved music. It was a part of her. And she felt no more nervousness than he might have had at the height of his brilliant career as one of the world's most celebrated pianists. Pamela Barrett might have felt differently, however, if she knew what was in the heart and mind of Denise Barrett, her young and attractive stepmother. Pamela's touch might not have been so fine, so sure, if she had the knowledge of Denise's cold, calculated plan for murder. It was a plan that began some time back, wasn't it, Denise? At an even more innocent affair. An impromptu concert at a pleasant social gathering. Friends of yours and of Pamela. As usual, you watched admiringly as Pamela played for her friends. Softly. Beautifully. Pamela, darling, it was beautiful, wonderful. Thank you, Denise. All of you, thanks so much. She's ready now. Oh, you must arrange a day before, Denise. I should say so. Oh, you hear them, darling. It's what I've been telling you repeatedly. You mustn't let anything interfere with your music. Nothing will, Denise. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to... You've done a marvelous job as a guardian, Denise. Her father would have been proud. Yes, it's a shame Thomas Barrett couldn't be here. Oh, yes, he would have loved to hear his daughter play tonight. Yes, Yes, it's our only regret. Oh, now, dear, I'm sorry I mentioned that. Oh, it's all right. Just the excitement. The thrill of hearing a play so much like... like Thomas himself. Yes, Denise, so much like Thomas Barrett himself, your late husband. The thought is still on your mind as you excuse yourself. Leave your guests discussing the way you've managed Pamela brought her along, guided her career and affairs so efficiently. And on the terrace, you're congratulated again by a guest who has remained in the background, Marty Drake, attorney for the estate of your late husband, Thomas Barrett. She was very good, Denise. Very good. The girl does have talent, doesn't she? Uh Uh-huh. You uh, think she meant that about not letting anything interfere with her career? I hope so. So do I. You ought to make sure, you know. A young girl in love that way? I've managed her pretty well until now, Marty. And she has faith in you, both personally and as an attorney. She told me the other afternoon she was glad you were handling the estate. Oh, sure. I was just thinking her father's brilliant career ended by an accident. Would be dreadful if anything had to end the daughter's, too. Please, Marty. Sorry. Like I said, just thinking. Marty... It, it would be terrible if, 
If... You couldn't handle it? Couldn't talk her out of marrying Richard Matthews? Oh, but I can. I must... You can say that again, baby. Her marriage would put us both in the position of having to account for the $100,000 we've managed to remove from the estate. A hundred thousand? Is it that much, Marty? We've lived well, Denise. Very well. Since Thomas fell over that cliff a year ago. But a hundred thousand, Marty, that's... That's the difference between a misdemeanor and a felony. You'd better go to work on Pamela. I will. Tomorrow. Thought you might like a cocktail, Mrs. Derrick. There. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you, Alma. Uh, thank you. I could use one very nicely. Oh, Alma, would you tell Pamela there's another number I'd like her to play? Liz Liebenstrom. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. She told me to tell you. She's gone out. There was a phone call. Not, not Richard Matthews. Oh, yes, ma'am. Richard Matthews. Well, and you tell me not to worry. Marty, we're going to have trouble. So is Pamela. How do you mean? We, uh... Won't have much choice, Denise. If your lovely stepdaughter persists in marrying, there might be only one way to stop it. Yes, one way. And this time, you'll do the stopping. If you don't, baby, you won't be around to spend any more of Pamela's money. You'll be on the inside looking out. Oh, no, Marty. I'll stop her. And if you don't? If I don't, it's like you say, another accident. Another tragic loss in the Barrett family and the music world. Throughout the seven Pacific Coast states, from Canada to Mexico, motorists call Signal the Go Farther Gasoline. Now, naturally, we're mighty proud of Signal's good mileage, which has built that reputation. But equally important to you as a motorist is the way Signal gives you such good mileage. You see, today's Signal helps your engine run so efficiently, you save gasoline three ways. One, you save gasoline with Signal's quick starting. Two, you save gasoline with Signal's smooth, obedient pickup, free from balking and hesitation. Three, you save gasoline with Signal's lively power that gets you into high gear fast helps you stay there with a minimum of shifting on hills or in traffic. Well, considering the number of times a day you start your car, accelerate, and shift gears, even a little gasoline saved each time soon adds up to a big saving. So there, in a nutshell, friends, is why motorists call Signal the go-farther gasoline. Why not treat your car to Signal and go farther? Yes, Denise, as Marty indicated, Pamela must be dealt with firmly, decisively. Her romantic inclinations toward Richard Matthews must come to an abrupt halt. Yes, because with marriage, Pamela would be in a position to explore the nefarious financial dealings in which you and Marty have engaged with the funds from the estate. Also, Pamela might have reason to suspect the grim fact that her father, Thomas Barrett, might have died by other than accidental means. You lose little time in facing the situation squarely, Denise. As the following afternoon, you hurry down the long corridor toward the music room, determined to talk to her. However, as you pass the study, the maid steps into view. Oh, ma'am. Uh, yes, Alma? Uh, about Mr. Barrett's curio collection. Miss Pamela said she didn't want anything touched. I told her that oh, you... Oh, now, really? I don't see why she insists on keeping those awful things around. Spears, poison darts, those vials of South African poisons... Snake venom, all those things. Well, her father's man. I can't didn't... imagine what Mr. Barrett had in mind bringing those horrible things back with him after that South African tour. I just can't. Oh, poison. They make me shiver. Oh, well. Never mind, Alma. I'll talk to Pamela again later. Very good, men. You play Chopin nearly as well as your father did, Pamela. You're still angry with me, aren't you? Well, I, I don't blame you, really. 
I should have told you the reasons I thought it best that you postpone your marriage to Richard for a year or two. The main reason is that you enjoy telling me I can't do things, isn't it, Denise? You think I'm very unfair, don't you, dear? Aren't you? I don't think so. Oh, Pamela, I, I know how hard it's been for you since your father died. It's been hard on me, too. I loved him very much. And I, I, I've just been trying to keep a promise I made to him about you. I guess I've gone at it very badly. Promise? What was the promise? I promised him I'd see to it that you followed in his footsteps. Became a great concert pianist. You did? Yes, dear, I did. Dad asked you to? Yes. He wanted you to make your debut at Civic Hall on your 19th birthday. Well, that's scarcely two weeks away. Yes, it is. But I made all the arrangements some time ago. And that's why I was so shocked when you said you wanted to give up your music and marry Richard. And why I was so emphatic in saying I wouldn't let you. My career meant a lot to Dad, didn't it? Pamela, you're awfully young to get married. Why not wait for a couple of years, and in the meantime, go ahead with everything just as your father planned? I guess it would have made him happy. No, of course it would. All right, Denise. I'll try to go on with my career. You'll always be glad, darling. You may feel bad now about postponing your marriage to Richard, but... Well, after you get started on your career... Denise, you must have misunderstood. I said I'd continue with my music, but I didn't say I changed my mind about marrying Richard. <sighs> but you, you, you can't marry him. You wouldn't have time for both. Look, you... Denise. Legally, I'm old enough to be married, with or without your consent even if you are still guardian of my money. If I decide to marry Richard, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Remember that. Nothing. You've failed, haven't you, Denise? That look on Pamela's face. You've seen it before on her father's face. The man you married with so much more than love in mind. Yes, Denise... To gain control again, there's another step necessary, a more drastic one, but something more in your line. You've always managed with men easier than with women. And later that week, out at the swimming pool, you call on all the strength of your considerable feminine powers to turn the tide for you. Win Richard away from Pamela. Morning, Richard. Good morning, Mrs. Barrett. How's the water? Oh, warm and wonderful. Here, give me a hand, will you? Oh, sure. Yes. Well, there we are. Oh, thanks. Now to get this cap off. Oh, it was such a beautiful morning. I just couldn't resist the pool. Uh, hand me the towel, will you? Oh, yeah, here we are. Oh, thank you. Pamela around? Uh, oh, she had some shopping to do. That's why I asked you over. I, uh, I want to talk to you alone. Sit down, Richard. All right. Pamela tells me you're quite a musician. No, she's prejudiced. You, um, uh, you like Pamela very much, don't you? I love her. Enough to put her welfare above your happiness? Of course. Well, then, don't let her think about getting married until she's reached the place in the music world her father planned for. Why couldn't she do both? Well, she, she just couldn't, that's all. Well, hundreds of women have combined marriage with a career. Rather successfully, too. Oh, perhaps, but not Pamela. She's different. Her life shouldn't be complicated with emotional disturbances. Her thoughts should be only of her music. And uh, you are rather distracting, Richard. Oh, well, now, really, Mrs. Barrett, you make it sound... Denise, please. All right. Denise? Uh, did it ever occur to you that the... Uh, well, the things Pamela sees in you are obvious to other women, too. I, I never thought much about it, Mrs. Denise. You know, Pamela is such a child, naive and all. But you and I, Richard, we're the same kind. I knew it from the first time I saw you. Remember, Richard, Pamela's first concert? The afternoon you brought her the first rose? I remember you seemed a little surprised when we were introduced. Uh, yes. I suppose I was. I didn't expect Pamela's stepmother to be so... So what, Richard? Well, young and, uh, and so attractive. <laughs> How nice of you to say that, darling. You, you really think me attractive? Yes. Very. 
My, we are getting along well, aren't we, Richard? I, uh, I think we should get to know more of one another. Don't you? Uh-huh. Well, there's no time like the present. Is there? Whatever you say, Denise. He's falling into the trap, isn't he, Denise? Soon you'll be able to twist him around your little finger. Yes, you're confident that when you're through with Richard, he'll have forgotten that Pamela ever existed. You sit there at the edge of the pool with Richard for over an hour. Then when he's gone, you hurry to the telephone and call Marty. So you charmed the boy, huh? What did he tell you? Well, it isn't what I told him. It's what I left unsaid, Marty. That's what counts. I'm certain he thinks I'm quite mad about him, and he's very interested. You say keep that little rendezvous? Oh, of course not, and I didn't ask him to. I merely mentioned that I'd be dining alone tomorrow night at that quaint little cafe overlooking the sea. And how I loved it there, the soft music, the candlelight. Think he'll show up? <laughs> how could he turn it down? Don't worry, Marty. After tomorrow night, all our worries will be over. Promptly at seven the following night, you enter Shafini, that quaint little cafe on the beach. The head waiter steers you to a secluded table near the large window overlooking the sea. And there in the candlelight, you sip a martini, wait for Richard to show up. Suddenly you're aware of someone standing at your elbow. Good evening, Mrs. Barrett. Yes. Allow me. I am René Demont. May I sit down? Well, just a moment. I don't... I am from the Hollywood Escort Bureau. Escort Bureau? Yes, Mr. Richard Matthews hired me. He said Mrs. Barrett hated to dine alone. Get out of my way, you... You Now, look, lady, how about my fee? Collect your fee from Richard Matthews, the man who hired you. He'll pay. Yes, he'll pay all right. Denise, are you sure Richard sent that two-bit Romeo, the guy from the escort bureau? Oh, of course, Marty. And of all the dirty, shabby tricks. <laughs> Worse than the one you tried to pull on Pamela, baby. You must be losing your technique. Well, you won't think it's so funny when I tell you that last night, Pamela informed me she and Richard are planning to get married right after the concert. What? I said they were planning, Marty. But the wedding will never take place. Well, how are you going to stop it? Poison her cornflakes? Oh, don't be a fool. I... Poison? She has poison. That's it, Marty. What are you going to do? The Barrett Curio Collection. The poisons my late husband picked up in South Africa. Some of them are fatal, almost in a matter of minutes, Marty. Now, I can't imagine why a great musician like Thomas Barrett went in for a gruesome hobby like collecting poison. Surprised you didn't dispose of them after his death. Oh, Pamela wouldn't let me. Pamela wouldn't let me get rid of a thing. Now, very thoughtful of her. How very thoughtful. Just a scratch from any one of those poisons and it's all over for little Pamela. All right. But how are you going to do it? I don't know, Marty. But I'll think of something. I'll think of something. Yes. And it's on your mind all that night, isn't it, Denise? You've got to find a way to kill Pamela with one of the poisons from her father's collection. And somehow Richard must be blamed. Just how you're going to do that isn't clear. Not yet. Not until the following afternoon. When suddenly, quite by accident, you stumble on the answer. You're sitting in the library when your maid walks into the room. Oh, Alma. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there are some things I want sent to the cleaners, if you'll come upstairs with me. Right away, ma'am. Oh, where are you going with those flowers? Well, Miss Pamela asked me to take them out of her room and put them in here. Gardner picked them this morning. Aren't the roses beautiful? Yes, they are. They're, yeah, they're quite beautiful. Put them in that vase over there. I just, I just remembered I have something important to do. The waves are really coming in tonight, aren't they? Mm-hmm. You know, Marty, I've been thinking. Huh? It's really very simple. We poisoned Pamela with a rose. A rose from her darling Richard. I don't follow you, Denise. Well, Richard always sends her a rose when she appears on the stage. It's become a superstition with him. She wouldn't appear without it. All right, so? 
I'll arrange to be at the door when the florist delivers it. Now, they always wrap the stem of the rose with a very thin wire. I'll put several sharp wires on it, Marty, and one of them right up through the rose. And all of them especially treated. One of those wires will be sure to scratch Pamela. Mm. But suppose... I'll pin the rose on her and arrange it so she'll be certain to scratch herself. Ah, it'll never work. The police will be sure to find out. Well, it'll make it all the better if they do. Richard sent her the rose, not me. He always does. Yes, but the motive. Why would he want her out of the way? Because he was madly in love with me. And he wanted the Barrett fortune, too. You see, he knew that with Pamela out of the way, all the money would go to me. You know, that might work. And with you, the attorney for the Barrett estate, to back up my story, it can't fail to work. Sure. It'll stand up, baby. And in another month, Marty, the Barrett fortune will be all mine. Uh, ours, baby. Uh, all right. Ours. <laughs> However, I think I should warn you, Marty. Oh? Just in case you get ideas about pushing me off a cliff and keeping all the money for yourself. Oh, now, look, we're getting married. Yes, I know. But I've taken the necessary precautions just the same, darling. I've sent a letter to a friend of mine, a lawyer. That letter will be opened in the event of my death. What are you driving at? And it's all there, in the letter, Marty. All the evidence the district attorney will need. How you embezzled money from the Barrett estate and the complete story of Thomas's death. You see, I'd hate to have an accident happen to me, Marty. Fall off a cliff like he did. You don't think I'd double-cross you, Denise? I'm crazy about you. Oh, of course you are. But I just want to make certain you don't have a change of heart. You might get to think that a half million dollars looks better to you than I do. You see what I mean, darling? How much does it cost per month? That's really the only accurate way to judge cost when buying a new battery for your car. Here's what I mean. If a battery is guaranteed 30 months, that means 30 months is about the minimum life the manufacturer has built into that battery. So you divide the total cost by 30 to find the cost per month. Well, judged on that basis, one of today's lowest cost batteries is also one of today's most powerful, most trouble-free batteries, the new Signal Deluxe battery. In fact, you enjoy up to 35% more power from a Signal Deluxe battery. That means quicker starting, extra power for the many electrical gadgets on today's cars. But because it's built to last up to two and one-half times as long as ordinary batteries, a full 30 months on a service basis, a Signal Deluxe battery costs amazingly little per month. Even less when you consider the generous trade-in allowance signal dealers are now giving for old batteries. And easy credit terms are available. So next time, get more for your battery dollars. More economy, more trouble-free service. Next time, get a Signal Deluxe battery from a Signal service station. It was easy to complete your plans for the murder of your stepdaughter, Pamela Barrett, wasn't it, Denise? The single rose you knew Richard would send her arrived while Pamela was upstairs dressing for the concert. It took you only a few moments to turn it into a deadly weapon. Then you went to Pamela's room and carefully pinned it on her dress in such a way that she'd be certain to scratch herself and die by the poison you took from her late father's curio collection. You lie down for a while, certain that you'll soon be in full control of the Barrett fortune. You're calm and confident when Marty calls for it. Now, as you sit beside him in the concert hall, watching Pamela's performance, your eyes are fastened on the rose she's wearing. But as the recital progresses, you become more and more tense. The fear that your plan has gone wrong gradually comes over you. Something should have happened to Pamela long before this, shouldn't it, Denise? And as her brilliant performance draws to a climax, you exchange worried glances with Marty. Oh, baby, what's gone wrong? I don't know, I don't know. I was afraid of your idea from the start. Oh, it'll work, Marty. It's got to.
Come along, Marty. We'll go backstage to her dressing room. This way, Marty. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me, please. Will you excuse me? Wonderful, wasn't it? Yes, great performance. Your father would have been proud of her. Excuse me. Come in, ma'am. Oh, wasn't Miss Pavilla wonderful tonight? Yes, yes. Where is she? Oh, she didn't come back to her dressing room. Ran right off the stage, left with Mr. Richard. What? Yes, ma'am. She gave me this note for you. What is it, Denise? Let's see, my, my dear Denise. Sorry to rush off like this, but Richard and I are driving to Reno to be married. What? I know you don't approve, but I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive us, love, Pamela. Married? Miss Pamela getting married? Oh, how wonderful, man. No wonder the poor child was so excited before she left for the concert. Oh, Maria, I don't feel well. I feel a little pale myself. Yes, ma'am. Miss Pamela was so nervous she could hardly pin Mr. Richard's rose on her dress. I had to do it for her. What? Miss Pamela was so excited you that I... You pinned Mr. Richard's rose on her? Yes, ma'am. But you couldn't have. I did it for her. I took it at the door when it came and pinned it on her dress in her room. And that's right, but I'm talking about the artificial rose Mr. Richard brought later when he came to pick up Miss Pamela. Artificial rose? Well, you know the allergy she's developed recently. Her allergy for flowers. Yes, I forgot. They make her sneeze. So that's why Mr. Richard brought her the artificial rose, so she wouldn't sneeze during the concert. Alma, what did you do with the real rose? Well, Miss Pamela thought it was too pretty to throw away, so she put it in your corsage what? just before she left with Mr. Richard. My corsage? This... this one? Uh, yes, ma'am, the one you're wearing. <gasps> Denise, your arm's bleeding. Oh, my, you must have scratched yourself. Scratch? Scratch myself? Oh, yes, yes, I have. When did you do that? I, I don't know. It, it must have been... Oh, Marty, I, I feel... Marty! Oh, well, what's the matter, ma'am? Is something wrong? Oh, Marty, I... The poison. Call the doctor. You know how quick it is. Well, help her, Mr. Martin. Denise. Denise. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Joe Gilbert, Barbara Eiler, John Stevenson, Sarah Selby, Bob Bruce, and Rye Billsbury, with piano passages played by Gene Lapete. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen and directed by Robert Hafter with story by Nancy Cleveland, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.